All right, 24-7 Hockey. Excited today to have Christian Folan here on the 24-7 Hockey Show to talk about his hockey journey. Christian has spent now two years playing NHL for the Minnesota Wild and then spending some time in the AHL as well for the Minnesota Wild affiliate team. Played college hockey, Division One college hockey at University of Massachusetts. Was it Lowell? Lowell, yeah. Yep, Lowell. And then uh, played his junior hockey with the Austin Bruins in the North American League. And Christian is from Sweden. He's a native of Sweden. So we're going to talk and cover a lot of things here. Christian, thanks so much for coming on the show here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to share my journey. Yeah, cool. Well, a journey is uh, definitely a good way to describe it. <laughs> um, I'm just going to start off here uh, kind of painting a little picture. Uh, you're sitting at a gas station in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, came over from Sweden to play college hockey. You know, was getting recruited by a college team. Got, you know, got over here, realized that that wasn't going to work out. Um, so joined with the Fargo Force in the USHL. They traded you. So in the course of, I don't know how long it was, a week, a month, um, I don't know how long it was, but you've gone through this process. Now you're sitting at this gas station. Your billet family dropped you off at the gas station. you got another team coming to pick you up on a bus on the way to a road trip, getting on a bus at a gas station with a team you don't know. What's going on in your head? I mean, first of all, it was just a, just a shock. I mean, I've, I've never experienced anything similar in my life before. Like, it's always been like I played here and I played there, and it's nothing being like I've been getting traded. So, first of all, that was a big surprise. I got traded, and I remember I called up the assistant coach for the new team, like, hey, we're going to pick you up at the gas station. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just <laughs> go, ahead and, go ahead and pick me up, and uh, we'll go from there. But I was standing there with all my bags. I had, I think, two full hockey bags with all my belongings. Like I had my suit packed and everything and the bus pulls up and I, I, I'm just standing there like with my belt mom's crying and I, I throw my stuff on the bus and I, I go sit on the bus and some guy tell me like, hey, you got to sit here. And I, I sit down and we have, we have, I think we have five hours to Bismarck still and I just sit there and I don't talk to a single guy the whole ride. Yep. I mean, what are you thinking about at that time? Like what's, what, what is your internal dialogue? Like are you going... Jesus, like, what did I get myself into? Are you going, you know, like, hey, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on Priceline.com. I'm looking for the next <laughs> light home. Like, what's going on? No, I mean, uh, at that point, I was, yeah, basically thinking in my head, like, hey, I'm like done. I can't do this. Like, what is going on? I just, I left all like the security back home, like all that like familiar stuff, and this is like the first two months into my my life in America, so it's like my English is not very well, very good. And, I'm not really comfortable in my my style of playing either. So, no, it was just it was really tough, and I, I was I was just sitting there just thinking like, what did I get myself into? What am I doing here? Who are these guys? Where am I going? I didn't know anything. So, I don't know to be honest. Like, I went and played. I played that weekend, and I played the next weekend, and then I went home for Christmas, luckily. And I went home, and I saw my friends, and they're they're all working nine to five jobs. They're doing carpentry and then they're playing hockey at night and kind of my mom kind of convinced me she told me like hey go back play hockey enjoy it if it doesn't work out and doesn't work out you're only you're 24 hours away you can just fly home right away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I decided that Christmas I it's like um, I'm I'm going back and I went went back and I lived with my coach for the first uh first month I think before I got a roommate yep. so it was kind of tough to get accepted by the team but yep. I was doing so well in hockey that I, I think they kind of kind of accepted me and and they brought me in and I got a, got moved out from the from the coach's house and I think it really took off from there. Good man, good. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's just it's it's simple, right? Like you look at you know you look at players like yourself that you know signed a contract in the NHL. You're playing in the NHL. You know, players think like, oh, you know, it's just. It's simple. You go from one level to the next level to the next level to the next level, and pretty soon you're in the NHL. Like, there's no adversity. There's nothing that you have to deal with. It's like, you know, what's so hard about that? You know, it's, 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 I think that it's hard to wrap their head around the mental battle that it takes for players to get to the level that you're at and the amount of adversity you have to face. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's really tough. And that's a part of being a hockey player though. You face adversity every day and like every shift and every, every time you step on the ice basically. So it's, it's part of the game, but 
for me, it was it was really tough those couple months, but I think it really helped me bring me to the level I am today, and and it really brought forth the best side of my game and and the person I am today. Mm-hmm. So then, you're now having a pretty good experience with Austin. You're doing well there, um, you know, performing really well. What is the uh, the college recruiting process like? Uh, well, I got. I got decommitted from Bemidji State, yep. so right after that, it, it was it was pretty tough. And I remember I had some teams come watch me play over there before like the second half of the season there, my first year. But they were not really not really sure what I could bring to the table. And I decided to come back for another year and play under Coach Talk, which I really liked, and he really brought forward the side of of my game that I that I actually that I play the same way today. So it's mm-hmm. kind of cool how he how he brought that forward in me. But uh, uh, no, it was obviously tough, and it wasn't a whole lot of phone calls. And I remember sitting down in my coach's office and like, "Hey, like, what's going on?" And because I wanted to know what what's going on here. Like, I really want to go play college hockey. And at the time, it was it wasn't really an option at all. So I decided to come back for a second year, and we kind of had the same thing going there. We had I had a bunch of schools actually come watch me watch me practice. They'd sit in the stands and just watch me practice. And then they'd say, "Hey, he's not he's not fast enough. He's not he can't do this. He can't do that." And I remember talk, talking to Talk afterwards, and he's saying, "Like, hey, I know you can do all these stuff. When they show up, you got to play your best game." So I think there's one game. I got, we had four or five scouts in the building, and I I played average. I didn't play bad at all. At all. I just played average. And he brought me in his office, and he just absolutely laid into me. And said like, "Hey, I brought all these guys out, and uh, you better play be- play play good in the second and third." And I think I played better in the second and third. And uh, he was he was he was pleased with me afterwards. But just bringing me bringing me in during that first intermission was 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 a good sign that he he really cared about me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, we talk a lot here at Twenty Four Seven Hockey that you know, you have to get in that mindset that there's people watching you every single day because, you know, you don't necessarily know. Like in your situation, you kind of knew people were watching, which that actually might be a little bit tougher, you know, like you can psych yourself out a little bit because you want it so bad, you know, you, but, you know, what's your approach on that? Like, did that, did that moment kind of click for you where like, holy shit, like why, you know, why am I playing average? First of all, like, why does he have to bring me in the office and, and, you know, kind of get me motivated? And like, is that just part of the mindset moving forward? Like, how did that affect you? Well, I kind of knew from the start that people are going to be watching me every game and not just watching me, but watching other guys too on the ice. So there's always someone watching and that's, that's something you kind of grew up with too. Like I would have people or even family in the stands. I remember when I was younger, I usually get nervous when my dad showed up. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that works for someone, but some people. But uh, no, there's always people watching. But uh, just when you when you have those, when you know that there's schools in the building, you always grip your stick way too tight. And mm-hmm. uh, but I mean, that's part of it—the learning curve too. Like you get used to playing under pressure, and mm-hmm. if you want to play on the highest level, you got to be able to to play when there's people in the stands and 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 enjoy it too, and and kind of get better when there's more than people in the stand. Yep. Yep. So true. So true. So why did you end up making the decision to go to school at, uh, UMass Lowell? Uh, it was, a it was a, it was a tough decision. Uh, I went out and visited to Robert Morris a week before and, uh, they told me I can only use seven sticks during a year. And I was like seven sticks. That's not going to be enough because I I wanted to work on my one timer. And I told the coach, hey, I want to work on my one-timer. So I went and visited Lowell the next day or a few days later, and they had a, a Bauer, Bauer rep, and they said, like, hey, you can use as many sticks as you want, and you can shoot as many one-timers as you want. And, like, after that and after see, talking, talking to the coaching staff, I, I, I fell in love with the, with the program, and they, uh, I decided to, to go there. But cool. just the stick, st- the stick story is kind of a, a funny, <laughs> yeah. funny way to put it. But yeah, I wanted, I wanted to have a, get a better shot. Yeah. And I was like, they're, they're not going to be able to hold me back because I want to, I want to shoot extra and I want to do extra work. Do extra. If I can only, if I only can do, if I can only use seven sticks in a year, I'm not going to get better because they're going to break. Yep. Yep. So that's, that was kind of a funny story, but uh, that's awesome. Yeah, because I, really, I remember talking to Talk. 
um, back in the day. Um, and he was also talking about like, and I think, I don't know if this is, you know, this is right or I misunderstood, but like the proximity for you to get to the rink to be able to work on it. You know what I mean? Like how yeah. close the rink was to where you were living was important to you too, because you wanted to be there, go there, work, and you didn't want to have to like, you know, make it a, a pain in the ass. You just wanted to be close to the rink so you could put, put the work in. Yeah, that's a big factor too. I talked to the strength guy and they said the rink is always going to be open for you to use. You can come in whenever you want. And the dorms, my my first year was, was really close. It was a five-minute walk. So that way I didn't have to de- rely on anyone else to take me or have to bike or anything like that. I could just walk on in there between yeah. classes, get my get a little work in and, and go back to class and come back in the afternoon for the real skate. Okay. So then I read online that uh, in an article that after – you know, the, obviously UMass was really excited to bring you on board. After the first weekend, though, it looked like you kind of struggled a little bit, and they didn't bring you on the next road trip. You had to stay back. Yeah, that was a that was a tough week. Uh, I played the first game. We had to, we had one game the first weekend. I think it was dash three or four in the first game of the year. Yeah, so I, you're I mi- minus play. three or four, right? Minus three or yeah. four the first game, and I so was like, as a oh, defenseman, God. that's you know that's not ideal that's not good at all yeah. so and as, as a stay-at-home defenseman puck moving yeah. defenseman being minus three after the first game is not not very good so mm-hmm. i had to stay back with a couple other guys and the rest of the rest of the team went to uh to denver and played two games they came back and i spent some extra time in the in the weight room and and kind of got in the lineup the next week and after that I, I played every 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 game in my college career nice man nice so again, it's just a, it's, it's not a straight line, you know, like there's, not a straight line. Little, there's adversity at every point you're staying back the whole team. Now you're, you're there, you're excited. The whole team's off on a, on a road trip. You're back home away from the team. What's going on in your head and what did you work on that weekend? Well, it's the same thing that happened when I got, got traded. I was like, yep. what is going on? Like, I thought I was part of the team, but now I'm not, and I'm not with the team. It was kind of a big surprise, but I just remember I find out the news on a Thursday, I think, and I went, I went straight in the weight room, and I worked out that, that same day because I was so angry mm-hmm. on myself and the coach. Mm-hmm. So I went in there, and I asked the guy, like, hey, I, I, want, I need to work out. And he's like, well, we're leaving, and we got work at, workouts set up for you for Friday, Saturday, and Monday, I think. And I was like, well, I gotta, I'm going to work out now. I don't care what you say. I'm going to, I'm going to do something. And I just did something and he left mm-hmm. <laughs> and they all went home. But no, I think that weekend we just, we would just follow the program. We did some extra bikes and, and then we, I did a lot of, we did a lot of shooting because mm-hmm. me and another guy that likes to shoot, we had a shooting bay in the weight room at Lowell. So oh, nice. we probably spent two hours there on, on Saturday morning and then we, we biked for a little bit. So it was a good weekend, but I don't know. It just kind of put, a picture in my head that I never want to do this again. Yeah, yeah. My college so like, career. When you look back on it, like you said, you know, you're pissed off at the coach and you're pissed off at yourself. Like, do you think that that was the right thing for you at that time? I mean, yeah, it kind of worked out, didn't it? Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, you don't know, you like, never want to stay back, but it, it was a good experience for me and something that made me really grow into the more. Yeah. Like, and I think too, for some players, you know, maybe not even at that level, but like just how, you know, just realizing like when you get in a position like that, you know, how important every single day is, you know, and just that can't take anything, you know, can't take anything for granted. Like you were obviously one of the top, you know, top recruits coming in and like they kind of shook your, they, they kind of rattled your cage a little bit with that. Yeah, no, absolutely. They really really sent sent a message to me like hey you got to be if you want to play on this level you got to be sharp every night and you can't be can't be doing what you did the first weekend so the coach did a good job sending a message and i think uh i mean even looking back at it with him and and uh, we talked last summer and he's just like well he worked out really well i didn't yeah. i wasn't sure if it's going to work out at the point cuz you never know what happens how people react to it yeah. but he said i took it really well and we we moved forward after that and even to this day he's one of my favorite coaches Awesome. Yeah. It sounds like you've had, you know, uh, fortunate to be working with some pretty good coaches, which is, which is, which is great. Um, so like talking about that working out and like he said, it could have backfired, you know, you obviously were able to, you know, take that adversity 
because some players are going to, you know, mentally get weak in that situation. They're going to blame, they're going to blame other people. You know, they're not going to put the work in. They're going to say, screw it. Like I'm going to go out and party this weekend. And like all of a sudden, like now the tra- your trajectory at that point continued to go up. Like, look at how the rest of your college career went. You never missed another game. You know, you guys won the hockey East championship, right? Back to back. Yeah. Back to back hockey East championship. Whereas like, you know, maybe even just the small decision of deciding like that weekend, like making this decision, you're going to go out and party and you're going to say, screw it and F everybody else. Like who knows where that trajectory could have gone for you. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad I made the decision to, to really work on my game and, and trying to improve instead of taking it the wrong way. So yeah. I think, but I don't even think for you, it was a decision, right? Like it's just who you are, you know, yeah. like, like, it's- and so what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to make is how do you get to be like, do you think that you're, you have this internal drive where you've faced this adversity and this internal drive that you have like to go after your goals and to not, you know, to not quit or not take shortcuts when some of these things happen? Like, do you think that that comes from the way you were raised? Is it something that, is there a point like in your, in your youth or something that you can point to and said, like, I became so focused at this point that like that helped me c- get through these points of adversity, you know? Uh, that's a, that's a really good question. I think it, it, it obviously helps with the way you're raised. And I, I had two younger brothers and we grew up in a small neighborhood with a lot of, a lot of like kids my age, a couple of like kids that are like year older or two years older that I always played with. Then we were always competing about everything. It didn't yep. matter. We, we'd race to school. We'd run to school just to race mm-hmm. and we do crazy stuff like that. And those are the same guys I played hockey with and soccer with growing up, and we were always compete about everything, and we just absolutely just hated losing. So like, we would always com- we would compete about the smallest things. But I think when I played hockey, I was around uh, fourteen, fifteen. There's like a like a just district team kind of thing, but you and I was trying out for the the guys that were on eighty nines. Okay. And I remember the coach told me, hey, you're not serious enough with hockey, so we can't bring you with this team. And that's kind of the starting point to me. It's like, I'm serious. Like, I'm, I'm going to be the best. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this guy that he's wrong. And to this day, it's all been all about, like, proving people wrong. There's no greater feeling than proving someone wrong. Like, hey, you're not good enough. You can't do this. And then just do it and blow it up in their face. Yep. You don't even have to do anything now. You can just, I don't have to say anything to him. I don't oh, have to yeah. point that out. I'm just here, and you know you made a mistake though all those years ago, and I, I, I overcame overcame it. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's that's so awesome. And I think you know, kids watching this that you know maybe get cut from a team, you know, because I get those emails all the time, like kids just panicking, like you know, hey, I got cut from this team at 16 years old. I didn't make the AAA team or the top team. Like, is my am I like is this my only chance? You know, am I done? And I mean, what do you think about that? <laughs> no, you're never done. Yeah. Exactly. You're never done until you tell yourself that you're done. Exactly. You just got to keep going. There's so many different ways to the same goal. It's unbelievable. Yep. Like I, you'd see the faces of the people that, that I told, hey, I'm going over to the U.S. to go that way. They're just thinking like, what is this guy doing? He's a good player in Sweden, but why is he going over there? That's not what you, something you do. Mm-hmm. So just be able to. Just take your own take your own path. There's so many different paths to the same to the, the biggest goal. Yep, yep. And it doesn't mean just because you're 16, 17, just because you don't play on the top teams, doesn't mean you can't make it to the NHL. Yep. yep. I made the NHL when I was 23, 24, and there's guys that even come later too. Yeah. And it's not a like I came into college as a 21 year old freshman. Yeah. Living with 18 year old girls in the same building. That's crazy. Yeah, I would have been, I would have been uh, twenty five graduating college. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can just you can take so many different routes to the same goal. It's it's that's the beauty about hockey too. You can go anywhere. And I think for me, like when you get when someone tells you no, you just go a different way. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something when you, if you get cut from a team, there's so many other different ways you can go to be able to to reach your final goal. And it sounds like a couple things, like you said, is, you know, if you, if you're determined enough, you don't give up on yourself and you find that other way. Cause sometimes that no can be, 
can be what you need, you know, because it's going to show you a different way and it's going to motivate you. It's going to drive you. And then also it sounds like, you know, you never stopped focusing on getting better. No, I mean, that's the, that's the main focus. When someone tells you, no, you just, you know that you're not good enough. So you have to, have to go back and, and work on those things and you got to get better and you got to work, get to a new level. And, uh, but at, just go, going back on just that, when someone tells you, no, you just, you just got to go a different way and kind of try to prove them wrong. You don't have to tell them anything. You just go move on and, and you work your ass off and you get to the next level. Yep. And that just proves in the putting there right there. Yep, exactly. So you're at Austin. College coaches are saying that you're not, your, your footwork isn't good enough or you're that you're not a good enough skater. You, you, know, you end up proving them wrong by going to playing at UMass Lowell and having a good, uh, you know, very good college career there. But I did talk to, you know, your, your junior coach, Coach Talk, and he said that when they were telling you that your, your footwork wasn't good enough, you know, you're out there as much as you can working on your footwork, working on your skating. Um, is that something that you're still focused on today? Were you focused on working, that in, working on that in college, and are you still focused on that today? Still today. Okay. It's always been a, been a main focus of mine since, since those days, actually. They told me, hey, you're not fast enough, and that's something I work on. I have a, I have a skills coach in, in Adam Nicholas out in, in Boston that I started working with in college, actually, that has done a tremendous job with my, my, my skating, and, and it's improved a lot, even even the coach at the NHL level now told me this year after this year, like, hey, your skating's been getting a lot better, and it's, mm -hmm. it's fun to hear, and it's something I'm going to continue to work on if I'm going to keep playing on the highest level. So you said something earlier that I want to touch back on because it kind of just, you know, was a, was a little bell in my ear when I hear this kind of stuff. Um, you said that, like, when it, when it came to choosing the college and, and, you know, the sticks and the shooting and everything, kind of that story, but you said that, you know, you want to do extra. You want to do extra. So you're at the college level right now. You're at the Division One college level where you, when you were playing at that point, all the players are working hard. Like you don't get to that point without working hard, right? Like practice, you're busting your ass. In the weight room, you're busting your ass. Game film, you're busting your ass. Why are you doing extra? Like why don't you just work hard? and the practices and the workouts and all the other stuff. I mean, that seems like a lot as it is. It is a lot as it is, but if you want to be better than those guys, you got to do more. You got to be willing to do that extra. And that just goes for everything. Like if you want to be better at someone, that's something you got to do more than they do. So if they do 10 reps, you do 11. If they do 11, you do 12. And that's something I've been doing all along. Like if the coach tells you to do six, you sneak in seven without him noticing. You just kind of sneak it in. No one knows. You don't tell anyone. You just do it. Oh, that's something gosh. I've been doing that I, I don't really tell people, but it's something I do sometimes. I hope just, every single player out there puts this on their phone and listens to that part over and over again during every single workout. Like This should be ingrained into their freaking brain. Tattoo that on the brain. <laughs> you know, because like that you just can't stress how important that is because like you said, how many players from your team at UMass Lowell are in the NHL right now? Uh, from my first year, there's three guys. Okay. so Goal and two defensemen. So at the top level, one of the best levels, a level that it takes so much work and effort to get to, only a few guys are even going to go far beyond that. So how in the hell are you going to stand out? How in the hell are you going to keep you know, improving your game if you're just doing the same thing that's assigned to you? Yeah, you can put the work in. And I'm sure everybody's busting their ass and they're giving it 100%. But, you know, can you do extra? It's that little extra that makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. It it's does. not – you don't have to have someone tell you what to do. You're smart enough to do your own thing. You know – you watch people do other stuff. You can do it yourself. You don't have to have someone tell you what to do. You can do it on – go do it on your own. Mm -hmm. You can just go out. You can go out and, and if you want to run for a little bit, you run for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. That makes a difference. Mm -hmm. You wake up a little earlier, you do a few push-ups, you do something. Just uh, just the little things. And I mean, for me, a big thing, a part of my college career is I started eating and drinking a lot more because I was a guy that I didn't really drink a lot of water. So I started drinking a lot, a lot of water. Dude, I've always I hate carried water. a water bottle with me. Why? I hate the way water tastes. I, want, I don't want water. I want Gatorade. I want the nutritional drinks. I want the super shakes. I want, you know, I want no. muscle milk. <laughs> Give me the muscle milk. No, no, no. 
water's the best the best thing for you and just drinking a lot of water really it helped me because I started feeling a lot better and I could do so much more I could just really just push my body because when you have all that fluid in your body you have energy and you can really like sweat it out and you instead of just being dehydrated at all times so that's what my college trainer told me like you gotta have a water bottle with you at all times and I did and to this day I still have one look at this there you go man there you go been taking sips all along here yeah. and I that's something I do all the time and I think that's uh, a good 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 solution if you want to train more and train harder and then what did you do on the nutrition side uh I've been I think I've been eating a lot eating well ever since I grew up it's been a lot yeah. of a lot of good good stuff my mom was so you just to be a little gymnast like trainer kind of thing okay. and do like spinning class like bike spinning class and stuff when I was growing up so she was really really stressing the importance of eating well and I think just from being around but you you you, you got to take care of your body like that's the only place you have to live in I've read somewhere so yep. <laughs> you gotta you gotta you gotta take care of it and you gotta make sure it's it's ready to go when it's it's called upon and uh but just eating you gotta eat eat a lot of a lot of good stuff for you. I mean, a lot of I I've, I've been eating for me myself like the last few years. I've been starting to eat a lot more more meats and salads and and green stuff because green stuff is the thing that has the most healthy 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 food. So just eating a, more, a lot more of that and kind of cut down like the like the pasta and the bread and like all that kind of stuff and and focus on more, eating more more protein. Do you work with the nutritionist at all? Is there like for uh, for the wild? Do they have somebody on that helps you guys with that kind of stuff? Not, not really. No, okay. they don't. But uh, my skills coach uh, has a good insight on that. And then I have the strength guy at at Lowell. He used to take us grocery shopping, so yeah. he just show us show us the ropes around. And he said, "Stay away from the middle aisles and just stay around on the outside and buy all the good stuff." Yeah, so, exactly. He really stressed the importance of of eating well and 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 being fit. That's a good idea for a video for twenty four seven hockey is going into the grocery store, huh? That'd show, be a that'd be a good video. Yeah, yeah. Just walk him around and show yeah. oh, this is good and this is not good. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's funny how that cycle works, right? Like you talk about training extra and doing more than other players. Okay. Well, that's going to take a toll on your body. So then the next day. You're, you know, you're potentially going to be tired, sore. How are you going to do extra again? Because it's the consistency. Like you just can't do extra once. You know, you got to do extra no. every freaking day, right? So now yeah. all of a sudden you're feeling sore, you're tired. Well, if you're taking care of yourself, if you're doing your 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 recovery, your your water, your hydration, your nutrition, all of a sudden now you're feeling better the next day, and you can you know attack that next workout with more intensity. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about taking care of your body like you said before i remember like in college i used to spend a lot of time like there'd be a lot of late nights in the in the gym like foam rolling stretching and cold tubbing hot tubbing and doing all that little extra stuff that is going to bring you to the next level and to this day i still like i do foam roll in the morning i do all like dynamic dyna dynamic stretches and, and all that kind of stuff before and after and i stretch and i i bike down and it's 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 become a lifestyle for me now and I'm just so used to it. Like if I don't do all these stuff, I'm going to be so sore and it's going to really like hurt my body. But it's all come back, comes, goes back to like just taking care of your body and, and getting the rest, the rest you need because the rest is so important if you want to play on the highest level. Dude, I'm so confused because you said it's a lifestyle, but I don't see any videos about the hockey lifestyle where people are foam rolling. Like I see saucer passes on the beach yeah. I see boozing out of a keg on the boat, but I don't see videos foam rolling at night and in the morning. Why am I not seeing that? On I don't know why. Why that's not the lifestyle I'm used to seeing in the Gong Show commercials. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they just want to show uh, all the good parts about hockey, yeah. but they don't want to show the work. The work you put in. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> um. So. Talk it, we've talked about nutrition. We've talked about doing extra. We've talked about, you know, the mindset, the focus, everything like that. And, you know, how some of your adversity has built that mental toughness. Do you, um, do you set goals for yourself? Like, do you actually have goals that you write down that you set for yourself? Yeah, I usually set a couple, like two or three goals that you can, you can try that are achievable. Okay. I usually set one, one every year. So my first year in the NHL, I said I wanted to play half the games. 
Okay. And I played 40 games, so I didn't really – I missed it by one, okay. one game. All right. What – do you set do you do you set like do you set, set shorter term goals at all like uh, or is it mostly just kind of these big picture like over the course of a season what you want to accomplish? I think uh, I do more short short term goals in the summer when you yep. do a lot of more training. Yep. Because that's kind of easier to test on a short short term basis. Mm-hmm. So you can see how much you you can gain a little weight or you can drop a little and you can like all that kind of different testing that go to goes into the off season. Yeah. But just like during the season, you you obviously everyone looks at looks at points, but I try to look at the plus minus as much as I can, and, and like ice time and stuff like that. I want to, or like even just like playing more on the PK and, and kind of stuff like that. So like you kind of put up set up goals for yourself that you kind of have in your head that are not you're always written down, mm-hmm. yeah. And just kind of you got to work, kind of try to work with like small goals at the same time to be able to reach the the big goals. Mm-hmm. I think. Do you like when you're go- when you've gone through this process of of training and all the things that you talked about, you know, doing extra, you know, your foam rolling at night, um, you know, late at night. I don't know if there's anybody else with you if you're doing it by yourself or whatever, but you know, putting in extra work before practice, after practice. Have you ever gotten to a situation where your teammates are kind of giving you shit, like they're giving you a hard time, whatever, like they're all going to do something and you're going to stay there and you're going to put the work in or foam roll? Or you know, spend extra time on the ice afterwards. Has there been situations like that? Yeah, I mean, it, it happens all the time that people want to leave early and they want to go home and they want to go get lunch. They want to go to the mall and they want to do all these other things. And sometimes you just got to tell them, no, hey, I'm gonna stay. If you want to leave, leave. I'll I'll get back by myself. You don't have to wait for me. I'll do. I'll I'll go to lunch by myself. If that's what it takes. But sometimes you you hear people like talk about talk about you putting extra work and staying out late but you know what it's it's your your life and your career and you got to take care of that and you got to do what's what's right for you and whatever makes you happy I think at one point because sometimes sometimes you're in a bad mood and you just want to stand there and shoot 100 pucks right in the net and just take out some anger and then after that you're done you go shower and take care of your body and you go home and you feel great again do you think that other players, like when they get into that situation, it's like, you know, when you're kind of going through your own routine and going through your own motions and, and doing this little bit to get extra, like, do you sense that there's a little bit of, um, you know, like, like jealousy, like that you're willing to push yourself that hard? Yeah, obviously. I mean, you see, you see people walk by you, they kind of walk into the training room and, and you're still there doing some extra like core exercise or something. And, you kind of get that they kind of did you see that they look at you and they kind of think like oh I wish I could do that and but not everyone has that that extra push to do that and I think uh, to be able to reach the next level or like to get to the next level where you're at from right now you got to do more and you got to do do it better than the rest of your teammates. Uh, I talk at twenty four seven hockey. I use the word obsessed a lot. Um, do you think you're obsessed? Oh, absolutely. Hundred yeah. percent, I am. Yeah. Do you think there's any way to get there without being obsessed? No. Yeah. You got to be mentally screwed a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, in a in a good way. In yeah, a good way. for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. No. It's, you you love the game of hockey so much that you know you. That's what it is. It's just the love for the game. I think that really brings it forth in you. <clears throat> the, I just interviewed uh, Pat Firstweiler, who was the assistant coach of the Detroit Red Wings last year, and he he said the same thing. He's like, you got to be a little crazy. Like it's in a good way, but you got to be crazy. And here we use the word obsessed. So I'm going to send you out one of our. We have uh, T-shirts that we give to some of our players that that say obsessed on it. So I'm going to send you one out to Sweden. Love that. Yeah. Um, Can't wait to rock it. Yeah, there you go. All right, so. Uh, just a few few more things here, man. Like, I mean, right now, like, we could end this right now, and I think this could be one of the most valuable things we've ever posted on twenty four seven hockey. So I appreciate this. Um, you averaged about a half a point a game in college hockey at divi- at the Division one level, but like you said, you're a stay at home puck moving defenseman. I think a lot of times there's this notion that in order to you know, and a, a po- let me just say this: a half a point a game in Division One hockey is a lot for a defenseman. Um, I think a lot of times there's this 
you know, mindset that if I want to be an offensive defenseman, I need to be rushing the puck. I need to be constantly sneaking in from the blue line, you know, into the high slot, things like that. What is your take on, on how you're able to produce offense and, you know, without kind of doing all these things that a lot of people are, you know, that they, they coordinate with an offensive defenseman? And, and how do you consider to be creating offense like with your style of play? I think the, the biggest thing to create offense is to get the puck back. And to get the puck back, you got to play solid defense and kind of get it back. And that's something I try to been incorporated in my game. And you bring the you have a really tight gap when you bring the puck back, and you can turn it over, and then you let your forwards do the rest. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, it's all about kind of accepting accepting the play and kind of break it up, and then kind of go from there. And uh, a lot of from a lot of my points are like you, you may force the the forwards to, to turn it over, and then you. You make a good first pass up, and then you know when you give the puck. You, when you give the puck to the forwards, uh, you just gotta kind of follow it up, and then if they're nice enough, they give it back to you, and you get a good scoring chance. But <laughs> it doesn't always happen that way. But uh, a lot of times, especially playing for Lowell, there the, our forwards did a tremendous job, just feed, giving us the puck back on the blue line, so we can shoot it, and they did a good job in that front, and that that's how I got a lot of my points. But I think for for a defenseman these days, you see a lot of guys that they like to carry the puck. You see the Carlson, the Doughty, and all those guys that that carry it a lot. But there's only so many guys in the NHL that could do that. What are they? There are like three or four of them, and they're not very. It's tough to play that way because it's it's not easy because yeah. you, you get you get tired. And uh, I think uh, you look at all the other defensemen like Burns and like the bigger bodies that. That move the puck really well. They they're so important for their teams, and that's that's the kind of defenseman I want to be, and that's mm-hmm. the kind of defenseman that are successful and win trophies at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like you you know playing really good defense, getting the puck back, making good first pass in transition, and uh, and then just doing your job of following up the play and knowing that sometimes you're going to get it back, some, sometimes you're not. Yeah, it, I, like what I said before, it all starts with the defense, just yeah. being good, defensively sound, and you get the puck back and you just move it up to the forwards and let the puck do the job because the game of hockey is so fast these days that if you hold on to it for too long, you're going to either get stripped of the puck or you're going to get ran over. So move it quick and then get a new position. Yeah. Are you, uh, do you work on your hockey sense at all? Like, do you, you know, that's kind of a general term, right? But like, are there things yeah, that you bad. work on? Uh, for you know, trying to learn the game a little bit better, learn your position a little bit better. I mean, you watch a lot of lot of video during okay. the year. We have this app uh, or this app on our iPad that we can watch all the games in the NHL during the year. So you watch a lot of the the players that you that you want to become like. And I I watch a lot of our defensemen too. You know, you see uh, Spurgeon move the puck. You see Scandella jumping in the rush. You see Suter just being big and poised, just mm-hmm. staying in the right lane. And you, you kind of watch Brodeen's footwork, which is unbelievable. He's always in the right position. And just kind of, you take stuff from like all over the place and you watch the Duncan Keats, you watch all these guys that, how they play and how they skate and how they, how they just act around the rink. And that's kind of what you, what you bring into yourself. And, and you got to, you got to create your own, create your own player and be your own player. Yeah. But, you can definitely take stuff from other players that do stuff well. Yeah, so I mean, it'd be fair to say that <clears throat> you're working on learning from you know other players and what other players are doing well, and and working on you know studying studying that and applying it to your game. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> that's that's what I do a lot of times. You you watch a lot of a lot of YouTube. It's it's so great. I mean. When I was growing up, we didn't really have too much YouTube. I mean, there's there's some, but there's there's way more now. Like with all these, this video showing you how to skate, and you can just just take a little peek at it. You know, if you don't like it, you don't like it, but you can just just try. It doesn't hurt to try. You know. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> do you have uh, do you have coaches that you work like? We talked about you know nutrition. And it doesn't sound like there's necessarily a nutritionist that you work with, but you get some advice from, you know, your, your strength and conditioning coach. You get some advice from your skills coach. You mentioned that you have a skills coach as well. Are you, how do you work with your skills coach if, if he's out in Boston? Does he come, you know, do you guys meet up together and work together in person? Is he sending you drills or things like that? Yeah, we have a, we have a really good relationship. He sends me videos and I send him videos 
cut videos of my shifts and I say, I'm like, hey, this is good, this is bad. Yep. And he kind of he breaks down all my games and he does a lot of a lot of video and uh, he sends me a lot of stuff. And sometimes I have guys like trainers come fill me like on the ice when I do extra yep. when there's no one else on the rink. Yep. They fill me and I send it to him like, hey, can you take a look at this and let me know what you think and. But last last summer I was out in Boston for for six weeks, six seven weeks before the season started, and worked mm -hmm. with him three four times a week. Nice. And uh, and this this year my plan is to fly him out here for for two weeks in Sweden, and do like a really intensive, intense uh, two weeks and have like skate like twice a day, and really get the work in. And then he comes out during the year too. And I saw him in Carolina a couple times, and and we, I see him all over the place. He's he's around so. It's a uh, it's a good relationship, and I'm really thankful for the, the the amount of work he puts in. Awesome! So he's he's helping you. He's studying your game film and helping you, you know, kind of work on your. Because we talk about skills. I mean, it's not just stick handling and shooting, right? It's your positioning. It's these different things yeah. on the ice to make plays, and then also working on, you know, you're sending him film of yourself doing shooting, and and you know, he's giving you feedback on that. Yeah, absolutely. So. A lot of times, I, I he, he looks at my skating and how, where my sticks positioned in the defensive zone, and he can. He told me a couple of things like, "Hey, maybe bump this guy here so he doesn't beat you back to the net," and yep. just like small things of the game like that, yep. just to, because the game's so fast. Like even when you watch yourself, you don't really see these things. Yeah. So when we have, it's good to have someone else watch your games, and then come back to you with feedback. Yeah. I mean. Obviously, it's tough to hear sometimes that you're not like you're not doing too well. That that goes back to our whole conversation, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's good to hear, and then it's good to know that you're not a complete player yet because there's so much more room for improvement. And just mm -hmm. just watching Yager, for example, yeah. it's unbelievable the amount of work he puts in and the kind of player he is. And there's always more room for improvement. Yeah, that's so true. All right, so we're going to just finish with a couple of rapid-fire questions. So you can just give me whatever comes to your mind, uh, you know, quick answers, whatever you want. If, you know, if <clears> nothing <throat> comes to your head, we'll just pass it and go to the next one. Um, <clears throat> so are you, like, are you looking, like, reading or studying anything? So maybe it's videos on YouTube that you like, or maybe it's a book or an article or something to help you kind of, like, continue to work on your mental game? I read, I read a, a soccer player's biography that okay. i thought was really cool and you kind of see how his he's been handling his situation with his coaches and on all that kind of stuff and it's it's been really interesting to see how he acts towards his coaches and how he he treats his body and all that kind of stuff i read i watched a documentary on cristiano ronaldo for example yep. that i think everyone should watch <laughs> the amount of work he puts in i, I mean you, you don't even have to be a soccer player to like no. him because we a lot of guys on the team actually watched the documentary they said they loved it because yep. the amount of work he puts in, and he has a he has a pool in his in his house with a bike in it that he sits and bikes on after games and practices and stuff. So that's something you should really look into if you have time. Cool. It's a documentary. It's like an hour long, I think, and it's it's really cool. And it's so, something. I'll try to find that and link it up below the video too. Um, cool. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, because I think that you can constantly. There's so much you can learn from people that are successful in other sports. Like they got yeah. to the top for a reason you know those habits don't change just because you're a soccer player a basketball player a baseball player a football player whatever like the habits are the habits yeah you know? exactly so that's awesome that you're learning from that um what did you have for breakfast this morning uh three eggs scramble uh two pieces of bread and yogurt with uh, cereal nice uh how, about how much sleep do you try to get at night uh around nine nine thirty nine and a half okay i think more nights, uh, some nights it's more like 10. Okay. Depends on what you're doing the day before. But yeah, around 10, I usually shut down my phone and, and go how to bed. How long do you try to sleep for? Like how many hours do you try to get? Oh, that's what I said earlier, nine. Oh, nine, so you try nine to get half, nine ten. hours. All right, all right, yeah, cool. Yeah, I usually go to, go to sleep around 10 at night. All right, so then you're that's up about nice. seven? Yeah, seven, eight, something okay, like that. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. <clears throat> You've been around a lot of elite players. How many of them do you watch that work on uh, stick tricks in their spare time? Spare time, none. Okay. What is one thing a player can do today to get them one step closer to the NHL? Watch this video. Perfect. That's a great answer. Christian, 
My man, um, is there anywhere online that like a player could follow you? Like, do you post on like, would you want players like follow you on Twitter, Instagram, anything like that? Like if some of these kids are like, man, this is awesome. I want to just kind of see what Christian's up to on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, just you can follow me on uh, on Twitter and Instagram. It's both uh, just Christian Fallen okay, on both cool. social media. All right, well, I'll link up those accounts. I'll link up those, uh, those profiles below too. Um, so yeah, cool. if you want to follow Christian, if you want to follow his journey here, cause it's, uh, it's been, it's been a good one, but it's still, there's still a long, his story's not finished yet. That's for sure. No. Um, I'm excited to see. Yeah, I'm excited plenty to see. Of more work to do. Exactly. Exactly. So awesome. Follow him and, uh, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your story, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It was, it was a blast. All right. Thanks everyone at 24 seven hockey for watching.